All right, here we are back at the monitor to install that power supply board that we just did the repair on and see if we can get this monitor back up and running. Um, first thing we need to do, of course, is mount the power supply back into the RF shield and we need to connect the power cable that goes to the CPU board. So again, we have it unscrewed. You can just lift up a little bit on that CPU board and plug it in. And if you don't want to, you know, have to deal with it, you can undo. There's a couple more screws on it, and then you'll need to undo the screws on the VGA and the DVI connectors. Then you can just remove this whole board. Um, I say whichever way you would prefer to do it. Um, both of them are going to, you know, do the same. You know, have the same end result. So we'll just get this plugged in real quick. Now we can swing the power supply over. You have a AC power plug and then the DC that goes out to the speaker bar that you, is an optional item for this monitor. Both of those are going to go through the chassis and then the uh, board is going to set down flush. You've got to get that power cable out of the way. Alright. And then we just make sure we have it aligned to the mounting holes. And we'll go ahead and start mounting the board in place. screws. Remember you have to do the two on the sides of the AC power plug. If not, when you're plugging and unplugging um, your power cord, it can break that socket off of the power board. You don't want that to happen. Actually, you just want to make sure you put those screws back. Okay. Plug the signal cable back in. Just plug straight back in. Then you can lay the power supply and shield down where it's going to be permanent. And you have the backlight wires to plug in. Now you have a blue and a black and a pink and a white. It does not matter which one of the two sockets on the tops and the bottoms that they plug into. The outputs are identical. So you just want to plug that there. Then we have the little RF shield that we need to bolt back into place. Now while we're moving up, we'll go ahead and put the three screws in that held those power supply heat sinks. last two plugs. Plug those in. And then we have that RF shield across the top that will need to be rebolted in place. ports. We have the screws on the end of the monitor. Those 
to on the opposite end. back into the front panel first. You can just place the control cable and feed it through. And then on the side, the little metal contacts are just going to push into the little socket back up on that sticky tape and just hold it in place while you're reassembling the model. Okay. okay, next we need to make sure that you put your push button and the ejector button back in. Like I was saying, if you assemble the monitor without putting that on and put the stand on, it's very difficult to get the monitor back off of the stand. Okay. Put the back cover back in place. to it and our power cable monitor up push the power button Let's see, we're not getting a signal turn on our power source or our, not our power source our video source and our monitor is back functional again so Another one saved from the trash pile and another probably $150 saved out of your pocket.